Hey, it's Patrick, and today on The Lift, I'm gonna be showing you how to replace the brake lines on your motorcycle. Now, why would you wanna do that? Stick around for this episode on The Lift and find out. There's a handful of reasons why you want to replace the brake lines on your motorcycle. For me, the most important reason is braking feel. When you upgrade from the stock rubber lines on your motorcycle to something like the stainless units we're using today, they don't expand like the stock line and you get a much better feel at the lever. They're also much more durable. If you're doing something like an ADV bike and you're going off-road, they're gonna stand up to the wear and tear of those elements better than a stock line. And lastly, they just plain look cool. It's a good looking piece to put on your motorcycle to give it that racy look. We're using a set of Galfer stainless lines on our 2016 Ducati Scrambler. Now this is an ABS bike, so we're gonna be running a few more lines maybe than a non-ABS bike. We have to run lines from the master cylinder to the ABS unit and the ABS unit back to the caliper on both the front and rear of the bike. That's why it's so important to get the specific set of brake lines that's made for your motorcycle. That'll ensure you get the right length and the right fittings on the end. Now to do this job, you're not gonna necessarily need a lift, but you are going to need a set of brake lines, some brake fluid, some rags, maybe a little bit of brake cleaner and a standard set of hand tool. First thing we need to do is get access to the brake lines. More than likely, you'll have to remove or raise the fuel tank and remove the seat. Next, if you can get the fluid out of the brake lines, that will keep you from making a mess with brake fluid when removing the lines. If you have something like a Mighty Vac or a pneumatic vacuum pump, it's a bonus, but not completely necessary, but definitely helpful. Next, we're gonna remove the old brake lines from the front brake system. You need to take note of a few things. First is how the lines are routed so you don't put the new lines in a bind. Then look where the lines are placed on the ABS unit, meaning take note of which hole the master cylinder line connects to and which hole the caliper line connects to. And finally, look at what bends in the fittings are on each end of the lines. You take these banjo bolts out, there's two crush washers, one on each side of the brake line. Make sure you get those old ones out of there. Sometimes they'll stick under the master cylinder or the caliper. You don't wanna double those up. So when you pull the banjo bolt off, you're pulling two crush washers out of there. Now we're gonna take the front caliper to ABS unit line off and it has a sensor wire running with us. Make sure you get that loose. The line kit came with new hardware with new banjo bolts, but if you have a bleeder screw that's set up like this where the bleeder screw is inside your banjo bolt, you'll need to reuse this bolt. Put new washers on it, but you can reuse this bolt. Now when we go to put on our new lines, we need to pay attention to the fitting ends on our lines. Now our lines are marked which one goes where, like master cylinder or caliper, but the ends aren't marked on what end goes where. So for instance, this has a 90 degree fitting that goes to our caliper. This is a straight fitting that goes to the ABS unit. When we put our line on, we're gonna wanna make sure that our 90 degree end goes to our caliper and the straight end goes to our ABS unit. So as you're taking these out, take note, of the fitting ends so you know how to run end to end your new line. So I'm gonna start by running the master cylinder line back to the ABS unit. The important thing here is to put these back where they were. So we're going to put our master cylinder one back on the top because this is essentially an in and an out and you don't wanna get them switched up. Mm -hmm. 
Once we are happy with the routing of the lines, we will torque them anywhere from 12 to 15 foot-pounds. From there, we'll move to the rear of the bike and repeat the process on the rear caliper and master cylinder. Remove the old lines and take note of the routing, which bends are on the fittings, and where they are placed on the ABS unit. Whenever you're putting brake lines on, if there's a little post like this, you always want to put the line so when you're tightening it up, you know, righty tighty, it's pressing into that. That's a stop to keep that from spinning. So you don't want your line to be on the other side of the stop. You want it to be here so when you tighten it up, it pulls the fitting into the stop. Once the lines are ran, we will attach them with new banjo bolts and crush washers, torquing them from 12 to 15 foot-pounds. Refer to your service manual for the procedure on your specific bike for brake bleeding, or you can check out Ari Henning's shop manual video. He does an excellent job of walking you through the brake bleeding process. Next, tidy up your brake lines and any ABS sensor wires that need to be addressed. And finally, replace any bodywork or fuel tanks you may have removed. It's not going anywhere. <laughs> now we're all buttoned up and our bike is ready to hit the street with its new braking capabilities. If you have more questions on these Galfer lines, go ahead and hit that info tab on your desktop or mobile device. That's gonna take you to the product detail page where you can read other writers' reviews and check out more specifications on the product. If you still have questions, feel free to reach out to our customer service team. They would love to talk to you about what works best for you, your bike, riding style, and budget. I'm Patrick, thank you for watching. Go work on those motorcycles.